Welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue our discussion of topic five with looking at European colonies in North America. So we're starting to get more towards uh, what's going to be the beginnings of U.S. history. Um, North America was, was really first claimed by the Spanish, but they largely left it alone until later on in the 1500s when they established St. Augustine. Uh, the first people really to seriously make incursions into North America, make claims for the French. Um, the area that's known as New France, which is now basically Canada and the Mississippi and Ohio River Valleys, were first claimed for France by Jacques Cartier. Uh, so this is going to be Canada, the Great Lakes, down the Mississippi River, the Ohio River Valley. Uh, it used to be called Louisiana, although um, back then, um, all of that was Louisiana, not just the state of Louisiana today. In 1608, the first permanent settlement that was established there was established in Quebec. Uh, it was largely as a center to trade in furs. That is the main livelihood that the French had with Native Americans was, uh, was the fur trade. Uh, not a whole lot of French people came over. Um, by 1763, which was about 150 years after they were founded, there were only about 70,000 people in all of that area. So for the most part, they got along with Native Americans, but they uh, never were very thick on the ground. Uh, the British colonies were a lot more populous. Um, they settled down the east coast of North America uh, from what's now Maine all the way down to Georgia. The first settlement that was a permanent establishment was in Jamestown uh, in Virginia uh, in 1607. Uh, the uh, Massachusetts area, New England, was first settled in 1620 by the uh, separatists who were coming over from uh, England to escape religious persecution. Uh, they are sometimes known as the separatists or the Puritans. Uh, they established Plymouth in 1620. One of the things that's kind of significant about this settlement is that they developed what's really known as the first constitution of North America. Since they were outside of the area that they were supposed to settle, they joined together and decided that they would go by majority rule. So all the men uh, in the, on the ship signed the Mayflower Compact, and it's considered to be one of the first governmental documents in, in U.S. history. Uh, about 10 years later, uh, Puritans from England who were dissatisfied with the Church of England uh, came over in large numbers and settled uh, the Bay Colony of Massachusetts, what's now Boston and that area. Um, so there's a rapid growth in North America. Um, in the same time period that New France only grew by 70,000 people, in the British colonies there were 1.5 million people. Um, there were lots of reasons why these colonies were established. Most of them were for economic reasons. So when you look at colonies like Virginia, Virginia and New York, they were established to make money. They were proprietary colonies. Some colonies were havens for groups of people, like for instance, Maryland was uh, a haven for Roman Catholics. Massachusetts was a haven for Puritans and separatists. And Pennsylvania was a, a haven for Quakers. Uh, and later they opened it up to other groups of people. And some of these colonies were actually personal gifts from monarchs to people that either were their favorites or people that they owed money to, like Georgia and South Carolina. So um, there were different reasons why colonies were established. There were three distinct regions in the British colonies, uh, starting in the north, uh, uh, the New England area, with uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, uh, New Hampshire, Rhode Island. Uh, then you had the middle colonies, uh, New York, Delaware, Pennsylvania, uh, mainly they were grain growing areas, but they also were involved with commerce because one of the largest cities in the colonies, two of the largest cities, Philadelphia and New York City were there. Uh, with New England, they primarily were relying on timber, shipbuilding, fishing. Uh, Boston was going to be the main city there. And in the southern colonies, plantation agriculture, largely tobacco, uh, rice, indigo, uh, and the only really large city that you had in the southern colonies was um, Charleston in South Carolina. Also, too, because of labor issues, uh, they needed people to come over. Uh, initially, they used indentured servants who were white uh, people coming from Europe to come over and work and pay off their, their transportation over. 
but there weren't enough of them coming over. And there were some also issues with uh, people once they finished their indenture, wanting more than what the landowners and the powers that be wanted to give them. So they began to import African slaves. Um, that's later going to cause a problem in U.S. history. Uh, as far as government was concerned, every colony had a governor. Sometimes they were appointed by um, the king. Sometimes they were by, appointed by the proprietors. There were actually a couple that were self-governing. Uh, but you had the governor and his council, and then you had lo the local colonial assembly, which was made up of the local landowners. So, um, you know, there was a fairly large number of people who could actually vote in the colonies. If you were a male and you were a landowner, you pretty much could vote. Um, the colonies were also a part of the larger struggle between European powers, uh, Spain, France, and Britain, and to a certain degree, the Dutch were be duking it out to see who would basically become the global power. There was no guarantee there would be any one group. Um, so you had a race for colonies in the Americas, and that race for colonies and that competition led to conflicts. So. By the time of the, the the early part of the 18th century, Spain controlled Florida and Texas, uh, France controlled Canada, uh, England controlled the eastern seaboard of the Americas, the Netherlands controlled the uh, Hudson River Valley, or at least until like the 1660s before the English took over. And then the Caribbean, you had um, English, French, and Dutch colonies in former Spanish territory. Um, there were several wars that were fought, but the one that really is significant for, for what would later become the United States was the French, the French and Indian War. In Europe, it was called the Seven Years' War, but um, it was a conflict between the British and the French who was going to control North America. The Span Spanish were pretty much at this point not really major players, but this was a, a huge war, a devastating war, an expensive war, and it really changed how things looked in North America. Uh, for one thing, it's going to lay the foundations for attitudes that were developing during the American Revolution. So, um, so that was a very, very significant conflict, and it, it's, it's going to shape how the United States developed. So anyway, that concludes uh, the notes for Lesson 4. As always, if you have any questions, please get in touch with me, and I will see you for Lesson 5. Thank you.